Hey guys, we're going to have a look at chemical reactions in organic compounds today. If you remember when we started organic, we looked at how it's quite similar to a large extended family. And getting to know the family is what it's all about. So our structural side is getting to know each of the individual homologous series and functional groups. Then we looked at physical properties, things like melting points, boiling points, etc. And then there was the all complicated story of the chemical reactions, which are somewhat unpredictable, but there's not too many of them. So you, you can actually master this with a little bit of practice and memorizing certain things. So let's get into it. Um, overview of what we're going to look at. There's four main reactions. There's combustion, which is organic compounds burning. Then there's addition, which is when something gets added in to the organic molecule. Okay, something new gets added into the molecule. Then there's substitution, where something goes in and something else comes out. Okay, one of the atoms um, or groups of atoms. And then lastly, elimination, where something just gets taken out of the molecule. So those are the four we're going to have a look at today. Let's get into it. Combustion. The burning of things. Now, typically we imagine that with flames, like I've shown there on the, on the right-hand side. Um, but there's all kinds of organic reactions that take place from inside the engine, engine of a car, where petrol or diesel might be combusting. It's, that's why it's called a combustion engine, um, through to coal being burned in an old steam train or in a power station, um, or even glucose being burned in your own body. Now, that's not with flames, thank goodness, otherwise we'd be a little bit hot on the inside. Um, but glucose reacts with exactly in the same way with the key component of air. So what is a combustion? It's the exothermic reaction of an organic compound in air. So the burning of an organic compound in air. And many, many, many of the organic compounds that we deal with are in fact flammable or combustible. Now, whilst there's a whole stack of them to know, it's quite easy because in every single case, the recipe is just the same. It's organic compound, organic molecule, plus oxygen, which is the key part of the air that it's reacting with. And the products, every time, are simply carbon dioxide and water. So out of the exhaust pipe of the car, predominantly carbon dioxide and water. Okay, Out of the chimneys of the, of the thermal power stations, carbon dioxide and water. And out of your lungs, carbon dioxide and water. So those are the products every time. And of course, a lot of energy is released, and that, it is why, that is why it's so useful as a fuel. So let's have a look at an example of the combustion of octane. Now, octane happens to be the major part of petrol. The only tricky part of a combustion question would be balancing the equation. Now, I'm going to give you the hardest one here, okay? Hopefully, you might find it a slightly easier one, but let's get into this one just to do an example. When balancing equations, start with the things that are set in one compound. So for example, the, the carbon and the hydrogen, there's only in one compound on the left and one compound on the right. Whereas the oxygen, when it comes to the right-hand side, that's split between the two compounds. So we're going to leave oxygen till last, alrighty? So carbon first. Carbon, we've got eight over here. So to balance it up, we're going to put an eight in front of the carbon there. And then hydrogen, we've got 18. Now, every hydrogen in the water molecule, there's two of them. So we have to divide 18 by 2. That'll give us 9. All right. So we've done carbon, hydrogen, all sorted. Let's look at oxygen. <clears throat> On the right-hand side, we've got 8 times 2 is 16, plus 9 is 25 altogether. Okay. Now, 25, wow, we've got a bit of a problem now on the left-hand side because Every oxygen is diatomic, every oxygen molecule. So we can't just put 25 there, otherwise it's going to make 50 of them. So we'd, we would have to put something like 12 and a half, but obviously that can't work um, because we don't have fractions. So there's a nifty little trick that we can do, and that is basically because of that half, we're going to multiply all of those coefficients by 2. So I'm going to clear the decks, and I'm going to double up that... Um, organic compound, the octane, and let's start again. So 2 times uh, 8 is 16, so I need 16 carbons. Um, we've got H, uh, there's 36 of them, times 2, uh, or divided by 2, sorry, will give us 18. And then adding up all the oxygens on the right-hand side, I've got 32 now, um, plus 18 gives us 50, and because it's um, 
two of them, I can divide that by two. That is going to give me the 25 that I need to put in front of the oxygen. Okay, so that's an example of balancing. It's about as tough as it's going to get, and hopefully it'll get you a couple of marks if you get that tricky question. That's combustion. So remember the main thing about organic compounds is they are often used for fuels because they release a lot of energy in an exothermic reaction. Okay, let's move on. Addition. Addition, remember, is where a new atom or a group of atoms is added in to the molecule by breaking a double or triple bond. So this is going from an unsaturated compound, in other words, one where there's still room to put stuff in, it'll have a double bond, or maybe a triple bond, and it's going to go to a saturated compound, a saturated compound being one that is just single bonds. So um, we'll get into an example a bit later and it'll make more sense, but there's four types of addition and it depends what we're adding into the compound as to what the type of addition is. So the first one is halogenation, where we add a halogen, a group seven compound, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, that is halogenation. Hydrogenation or hydrogenation is when you're adding hydrogen, all right? When we add a hydrohalogen, in other words, something like HF or HCl, HBr, etc., etc., um, that is hydrohalogenation. And then when we add water, it's hydration. So that is the type of addition. So if you see a compound that's going from a double bond to a single bond, it must be addition. And then if you want to go into the type of addition, then you can use one of these four names. Okay. Um, an example. Down the bottom there, you can see on the left-hand side, we've got ethine with a triple bond. Now, that triple bond can get broken, just one of them, making space on each carbon for those two bromines to get added in, one onto the one side, one onto the other side. So we're adding in the bromine to that compound, giving us 1,2-dibromoethene. Okay. Once again, there's still room to put more. That's still an unsaturated compound because of that double bond. And once again, we could break that double bond and put the bromine in one onto the one side and one onto the other side, giving us the 1122 tetrabromoethane. Okay, so those are both examples of halogenation, an example of addition. So that's the basics of addition. I'm going to take one step further for those of you who really wanted to get the fruit at the top of the tree, and that is to look at something called Markovnikov's rule, which is about the major and the minor product. And Let's have a look at an example here. We've got propene, all right, being added, well, hydro, hydrobromide, hydrogen bromide being added to propene, okay? Now, there's two options, as you can see, is that um, when this double bond here gets broken, the double bond will then create a space on each of those two carbons for the hydrogen and the bromine to attach. But the question is, well, who's going to sit where? Who's going to go where? All right, so who wants the window seat, who wants the aisle <laughs> kind of thing. And um, we've got to decide then which one's going to be which, because if the bromine goes on the outside, it's going to create one bromopropane. And if it goes into the middle seat, as it were, the middle carbon, it's going to create two bromopropane. And Markovnikov's rule helps us to understand which one of those it's going to be. Now, a, a silly way and a fun way to remember Markovnikov's rule, if you can picture this in your mind, some rugby posts, with a flock of birds flying over the top of them. Okay, what on earth is that all about? The rugby posts represent the H of our hydrogen molecule, and the birds represent uh, that little saying that birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. So what I'm meaning there is, it's just a simple way of remembering that the H's will go where there are already more H's. So let's come back to our example. We've got a hydrogen and a bromine to add in here. Well, the hydrogen can choose either carbon one on the end, which has got two hydrogens, or the second carbon, which has only got one. So it's going to choose the one with more hydrogens. So in fact, of these two possible outcomes, one bromopropane and two bromopropane, the major product is when the hydrogen went to more hydrogens, which was on the end, therefore the major is in fact 2-bromopropane. The other one does get produced, but it's the minor product. There's less of it. So that's Markovnikov's rule. A couple of other advanced aspects of addition. 
um, which you will have to memorize if you want all the marks, and that's getting to know the conditions. So for example, if it's halogenation, you need UV in order to break up that halogen. Um, or for example, in hydrogenation, you need platinum as a catalyst and pressure in order for the reaction to take place. Another application that you might, you might find in a question is an observation. So for example, the decoloration, decoloration of bromine water. Okay, so bromine water is brown, and if we pass the gas through it, an alkane versus an alkene, you'd find that one of those would take place more quickly than the other, because it's an easier reaction to do. That, in fact, is addition. Okay, so if we added the alkene to the bromine water, it would decolor more quickly than it would uh, if we added the alkane. Now, what type of reaction would the alkane do in the brom bromine water? Well, in fact, that is the next one we're going to look at, which is substitution. Now, the term substitution you might be quite familiar with from sport. If you play any kind of sport like soccer or netball or basketball or rugby, any of those things, if there's a substitution on the sports field, one player has to come off the field before the next player can go onto the field. So it's one off and one on. One out, one in. Okay, so that's exactly the kind of thing that happens in a substitution chemical reaction. A new atom or group of atoms replaces something in the molecule. Let's check it out. Mostly, um, this is going to be involving alkanes because alkanes are saturated and therefore there's no space to put anything new. We're going to have to take something out first. Let's have a look at this example. In this case, we've got methane, fully saturated. That hydrogen there is going to substitute with one of the chlorines and one of the chlorines is going to go in and therefore creating chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. Okay, so one in, one out. Let's have a look at another example. Um, haloalkanes, again, a saturated compound. Nowhere to put anything, um, so we're going to have to take something out before it goes in. This particular example is called hydrolysis. So you can see which one's going to come out will be the bromine, substituting with the OH. OH goes in, Br comes out, and we're left with one propanol and sodium bromide. Now, interestingly, that same compound could be formed or something similar with water, a reaction with water, where again the OH of the water, and in this case the chlorine of the chloropentane, um, they do a little substitution, one in, one out, and so on. You get the idea. Okay, so that's substitution. Um, moving on to the last type of reaction, which is elimination. Now, this is the opposite of addition, where an atom or a group of atoms is removed from the molecule. So that's going to take it from being a saturated compound with a single bond into an unsaturated compound with a double bond. So if you see that progression, it's an elimination reaction. Once again, there's four different types of elimination, same as we had before. Dehalogenation, when we remove a halogen. Dehydrogenation, when we take out hydrogen. Dehydrohalogenation, when we take out HCl, HBr, etc. Or dehydration, when we take out water. Now, each of those will have certain conditions that you'll need to get to know if you want all the marks. One more thing to mention on, on uh, elimination is another Russian rule you could think of it, and that's Zaitsev's rule. Okay, Zaitsev's rule um, again tells us about the major product and the minor product. Let's have a look at this example of 2-bromobutane being reacted with sodium hydroxide. Now, just take note um, that that sodium hydroxide will be concentrated in this particular case, and the whole reaction will actually have to take place under heated conditions. Okay, so we're going to put in heat in order to get this elimination reaction to take place. Just before I go on, if you remember from the previous page, let's have just a quick look at this. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, can you see here that there is in fact also a haloalkane being reacted with sodium hydroxide? But in this case, it didn't eliminate, it substituted. That's because in this case, the conditions were different. It was only warm as opposed to hot. And this base here, would have been a dilute strong base as opposed to a concentrated one. Okay, so the reaction conditions make a big difference. Let's go back to where we were. Alrighty, so there's our example. We're going to put this under a bit of pressure here. Harsher conditions, we're going to heat it with a concentrated base. Elimination is going to happen, but there could be two outcomes, major and minor. So 
The first option um, is that hydrogen on the outside could be taken with the bromine. Remember, the bromine's going to take come out, creating a space there, and that carbon's going to want to bond with one of its neighbors, so either this one or, or, or that one. And if it bonds with the outside one, then that hydrogen has got to go as well. So it's either going to take the hydrogen on the end, or it's going to take the hydrogen in the middle. Okay, which ones are going to be? Well, if it takes the one in the middle, then we're going to end up with this compound here. Okay, um, so we're going to have the double bond right bang in the middle there. We've got hydrogens all arrayed around there. Those two have gone and then we've got hydrogens all over. So if you were asked to draw the product, that would be the one option. Okay, let's draw the other product and then we're going to see which, which one would be the major and which will be the minor. In the green case, we've taken it from the end, so that's where the double bond would form. So we end up like that, four on that one. There's three there already, so I'm just going to add one. There's two there already, so I'm just going to add two. And then H's all round. Make sure that you understand when you're doing um, structural formula, formulae, you do the whole full structural formula. Which one of those is going to be the major product? Dun, dun, dun. All right, so the rule is, Side sieve's rule is quite similar to Markov-Dinkoff, but just the other way around. So instead of giving H's to where there are more H's, we take H's away from where there are less H's. So we're always taking from where less H's are and giving to where more H's are. Okay, so which one do we choose? The one on the left has got three H's, the one on the right has only two. So that one, the orange one, is in fact going to be the major product and the other one is going to be the minor product. So two bromine, no, yeah, two, two butene will be the major product and one butene will be the minor product. Alrighty, um, last thing to mention is, as we pointed out a little earlier, that the conditions are very definitive in terms of what the product would be under these harsh conditions that we've got here. Um, heat and concentration, um, then we're going to get elimination occurring. It's a little bit like that uh, game show, I don't know if you've ever seen it, called The Weakest Link, where if you get the question wrong right there on the show, a live TV show, you get eliminated from the round. So under harsh conditions, elimination happens. So this is heat and concentrated. Sure, okay, so that's a quick overview of the four major um, types of organic reactions you're going to get. Let's just quickly run through them again. We've got combustion, the burning of organic compounds as a fuel. Then we've got addition, where we add something into the compound, uh, going from a double bond, unsaturated, to a single bond, saturated. Substitution within saturated compounds, something in, something out. And elimination, where we remove something, going from saturated to unsaturated with a double bond. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Now the best way, before we wrap up, um, to get your head around these uh, chemical reactions is always, always, Practice, practice, practice. So the more questions you can do and you get used to those flow diagrams that they have um, and which re arrows represent which reaction and which uh, compounds are formed in each case, uh, the better and better and better you're going to get at doing organic chemical reactions. So good luck to you and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.